<laughs> this meeting of the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders is hereby called to order. Madam Clerk, can you please call roll? Freeholder Bo Badia, absent. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Here. Freeholder Johnson, absent. Freeholder Jones. Present. Freeholder Luciano. Here. Freeholder Richardson. Here. Freeholder Seaball. Here. Freeholder Toro, absent. Freeholder President Timberlake. Here. Uh, please stand to salute our flag. I'm going to ask Freeholder Luciano to lead us in the salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I have before me a certification from the clerk that this meeting is indeed in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts Madam, uh, to be approved? Madam President, there are none. Okay, are there any topics of discussion? Madam President, there are none. All right, let's move to public comment session. Uh, on agenda items only, if there's any member of the public wishing to comment on uh, agenda items only, please come forward, state your name and affiliation for the record, and you will have three minutes to speak monitored by the clock to my right. Okay, are there any other members of the public wishing to speak on any issue at all? If so, please come forward. Good evening, freeholders, Madam President. Good evening. Mark R. Ray Cowboy, 48th District Leader, South Ward, North. I just wanted to uh, speak on something that I had spoke on years ago, I mean, a, a year ago, more or less, when they were putting in the, the <clears throat> playground area down there, I was speaking on the way that they were putting the uh, grounds around the tree. And uh, I said what it would do, it would kill the trees if they didn't put a foot or two around the tree and uh, the way where the water could, uh, the trees could suck the trees up. But uh, that hasn't happened, but I'm telling you that the fall weather, that the, the leaves are not falling off the trees, it's the branches are falling. And that's the first thing that gives on a tree when it starts dying. And a whole cluster of leaves and the branches coming down. And no leaves is falling individually like they usually do when they fall. And I know that's the uh, beginning of a tree dying. It's the, the end no. of the, the, the roots. And, uh, <clears throat> and I was hoping that somebody would take a look at that and change that when they were doing that because I'm very uh, up on the, the chemicals and things that's up against that tree and the porous, it's porous ground where the water goes through but it kills the tree uh, when the water uh, goes through. It's taking the poisons through the chemicals and the tree sucks that up. And it'll take a, it's going to take a year or so for that tree uh, to die. But it's a, it's a tree that is over 100, 200 years old. I hate to see that happen. And it could be prevented if there was uh, somebody really taking uh, uh, up on what the problem is there. And also, I'm saying that there's a lot of soccer and things playing around that field. And behind the porter parties, I said, if they were just taking care of more and uh, paper and things put in there, people are not they're, they're complaining about even going in them. And there's broken seats and things like that. And I hope that that uh, that will be taken care of. Uh, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cowboy. And we will respond. Uh, thank you for bringing that to our attention. And we'll respond in writing within the next seven business days. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to close public comment session. For members of the public who are at home watching or whoever is here tonight, uh, tonight's meeting is a conference meeting where we generally only discuss resolutions that will be voted on at our next meeting next week. However, tonight we're going to be voting on resolution number 43. And just as a note, resolution number nine has been withdrawn by the administration.
Okay, Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances or resolutions on introduction and first reading? Madam President, we have none. Do we have any ordinances or resolution for listing purposes only? Mm -hmm. uh, Madam President, we have none. Okay, do we have any ordinances or resolution for a second reading or public hearing? Madam President, we have none. Okay, so we're going to move to resolutions number one uh, through six. Uh, Madam Clerk, please read them into the record. Uh, resolution one, advise and consent, nomination for the appointment of Robert Deal, Esquire, to the Essex County Workforce Development Board. Resolution two, advise and consent, nomination of the appointment of Daniel Mendez to the Essex County Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Questioning Advisory Board. Uh, resolution three, advise and consent, nomination for the appointment of James Kramer to the Essex County Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Questioning Advisory Board. Uh, Four, advise and consent, nomination for the appointment of Benjamin Fisher to the Essex County Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Question Advisory Board. Number five, advise and consent, nomination of the reappointment of Kathy uh, Hearn O'Brien to the Essex County Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Questioning Advisory Board. Resolution six, advise and consent, nomination for the reappointment of Paul Frenet to the Essex County Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Questioning Advisory Board. Mr. Jackson. Uh, good evening, Madam President. Uh, yes, we have a number of nominations uh, to boards uh, for your consideration. Uh, items one and two, um, specifically Mr. Deal and Mr. Uh, Mendez, are not uh, here this evening. However, the um, and also on item um, uh, five, uh, uh, the chairman uh, is not able to make it uh, tonight or the next week, but she will be coming to a future uh, meeting uh, with your permission. Uh, but we do have for items three, four, and six. Uh, the individuals are here, uh, Mr. Kramer, uh, Mr. Fisher, and Mr. Uh, Freen is, are, are here. And yes, are, please come uh, forward. to answer your questions. Yes. Thank you so much. Just tell us a bit about yourselves and your involvement in the... Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Kramer would go be yes. first. Recognizing freeholder Rufus Johnson, who's present with us. Hi, Mr. Kramer. You can use the microphone, sir. Just state your name and affiliation, although we already have okay, it here. Okay, my name is James Kramer. I am the Acting Executive Director of the Newark LGBTQ Community Center. Okay, and tell us a bit about yourself, um, what you do, okay. qualifications. I'm, uh, I'm retired um, at the moment from uh, a Medicaid managed care company, Medicare, where I was the Chief Operating Officer. And it, and it is a company that is focused on individuals with HIV AIDS. We were a very uh, large advocacy group and in that role as Chief Operating Officer, we advocated for um, many of the HIV AIDS uh, legislation uh, that uh, was approved for the state. Um, in my um, private life, I'm also doing healthcare management consulting um, in the areas of value-based payment um, and also in the area of general management in terms of customer service, uh, quality metrics, etc. And I live currently in East Orange, New Jersey. Thank you. Shout out to East Orange. That's yeah. my hometown. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for your work, Mr. Kramer. Freeholders, do you have any questions? Mr. McInerney, Mr. Paul Vecchio? No Mr. Kramer, thank you very much. Mr. Ja Mr. Jackson? Yes, uh, next up, Madam President, is uh, Mr. Benjamin Fisher. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Fisher. Um, so I'm Benjamin Fisher. I um, am originally from Columbia, South Carolina, but I now live in uh, Newark. I've lived in Newark for about two years now. Um, I guess in terms of my experience, uh, right now I'm working as a project coordinator at Newark Community Health Centers in their infectious disease department doing linkage to care for um, HIV positive, hepatitis C positive, hepatitis B positive patients. Um, I've worked for LGBT advocacy organizations in New Jersey, South Carolina, 
Um, I've worked in I worked in HIV research for about a year and a half in New York City, doing um, uh, managing a study that was specifically focused on gay and bisexual men. Um, and I've worked for Planned Parenthood at one time, doing reproductive health focus work. So um, I have. Um, a good deal of experience in healthcare as well as on LGBTQ issues. As someone, Madam Thank President, you. I hear a phone. I believe Jerry, is that feedback we're getting? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. McInerney, Mr. Paul Vecchio, freeholders that work that you're doing for that population and um, in particular with infectious diseases is incredibly important. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it. Mr. Jackson. Yes. Um, our last uh, nominee is uh, Mr. Paul Freen. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Freen, I apologize, sir. Um, and uh, he is also being uh, nominated for the uh, uh, LGBTQ uh, committee. Hi, my name is Paul Freeney. Uh, my husband, Gene Cavasis, and I live in Nutley. I'm uh, one of the original LGBT Advisory Council uh, members. Um, I work for World Business Lenders in Jersey City. I uh, loan money to small businesses, um, uh, active in numerous LGBT organizations, including Garden State Equality, Out and Equal, and National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Mr. McInerney, Mr. Paul Vecchio. Freeholders? Freeholder Siebel? Thank you. I waited till after each one was um, came to the microphone. But we have three wonderful people today. And uh, well, Paul, I've known for many, many years. And I'm the uh, freeholder liaison to the LGBT uh, question mark committee. And I've known Paul from, from the very, very beginning. And he does a wonderful, wonderful job. And the people who came before us to be interviewed have extensive backgrounds. And I see that some of them are involved in Garden State Equality. And I've been a member for so many years. And even the people who aren't here tonight have extensive backgrounds. And I'm so pleased that the county executive has been able to locate so many wonderful people who are willing to give their time and participate. And Paul, I'm willing, I'm really happy that you're willing to continue. I Thank think you that's very much. just great. That. And I understand that there are still three vacancies. Yes. Correct? Yes. Yes. I'd like to see those vacancies yeah. filled yeah. too. So yeah, we hope by the end of the year. Good, good. I wish you the best. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Free olders, anyone else? Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kramer. Oh, um, Jones. Madam President, I too would like to um, compliment the county exec executive for asking or requesting the help of these gentlemen tonight. I know just listening to their presentation that they're, they're the right people for the right job that they're planning to do in the community and especially Essex County. And I want to congratulate you and support you in any way that I can as a freeholder and as a citizen of Essex County. Freeholder, freeholder, uh, Vice President Go. Thank you, Madam President. Also wanted to congratulate uh, all the uh, nominees this evening. Uh, Paul, great to see you again. Uh, and thank you for, for serving. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think, um, unfortunately, um, there was a, um, you know, a very serious incident here in the county regarding a transgender student. Um, and uh, it shows uh, that, you know, there is still very, very much uh, a need uh, for this work to be done. Uh, so thank you for uh, raising your hand to do it. Uh, and I think I can say that, uh, as you know, you'll have the full support of the board uh, in that endeavor. Absolutely. Free elders? Okay. Thank you so much again for your work. All of your resumes are incredibly impressive, um, Mr. Kramer, Fisher, and Farini. Um, truly, uh, I know that you're going to serve well. Thank you. We are going to be taking action on this at our next meeting next week. All right. But I'm sure congratulations in advance. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask that you read all other uh, resolutions into the record at a later time. 
And Mr. Jackson, uh, if you can go to resolution number seven and please explain. Uh, yes, uh, Madam President. Uh, <clears throat> item seven is an engagement of an outside attorney, uh, Serenci and Hollenbeck, and our county council, uh, Ms. Gassione, is here to explain. Good evening, Courtney Gassione, Six County Council. Madam President, through you, um, this is a, uh, a request for an approval of a professional service agreement to provide legal services to uh, the county uh, in connection with an, a litigation matter. Um, the county council's office is seeking outside counsel on this particular case due to a conflict of interest um, with the county of Essex. It's a $25,000 contract that would bring us through the end of December 2017. Okay, thank you. Mr. McInerney. Uh, is, this, is this the first time this contract has become before us? Or? It is the first okay. time. This complaint was just filed uh, approximately six weeks ago. All right, thank you. Mr. Paul Vecchio? Just a question. Is, the, um, is this representing the county as a whole, or are there individual county defendants? There are no individual county defendants, just the county as an entity. Okay. Thank you. Free Elders? Brielda Jones? Uh, I would like to know, is this 25000 just for one shot deal, or will you come back before us asking for more money to retain him? Through you, Madam President. The $25,000, um, Freeholder Jones, is through the end of uh, this calendar year. Our, we are hopeful that this case is going to be dismissed um, very quickly on behalf of the county, and so there will not be a need to come back before the freeholders for additional funds. In the event it's not, and it goes forward in litigation, and additional funds are required for the payment of outside counsel, then we would have to come back for uh, an additional request for, for funding. Freeholders? Okay, hearing none, please list it for action at our next meeting. Uh, Mr. Jackson, resolution number E. Um, Ms. Gassion will be able to explain this as well, but this is our uh, reimbursement of, of our um, funds that we expend to for legal services uh, with the state of New Jersey Department of Human Services. Thank you, again, uh, Courtney Gassion, Essex County Council. Uh, through you, Madam President, this is um, the uh, reimbursement that the Office of the County Council requests um, every year from the state under the Title IV-D reimbursement agreement between the County of Essex and the New Jersey State Department of Human Services. Uh, the term of the agreement is October 1st, 2017 through September 30th, 2018. The total amount of the reimbursement that will be coming back um, to the county is $314,000 thousand dollars five hundred and twenty eight um, dollars this is revenue that will be brought back to the county as reimbursement for the services provided by county council's office specifically our welfare department um, our welfare unit within the county of Essex um, provides services in seeking reimbursement for child support um, it's, uh, excuse me for enforcement of child support orders um, and that is a unit of three attorneys, uh, one and a half clericals, and this reimbursement of the in excess of three hundred and fourteen thousand dollars helps us to offset the costs of that particular unit. Thank you, um, Mr. McInerney. Uh, no Mr. Paul Vecchio. No questions. Freeholders. And again, for those who are here tonight or whoever is uh, watching at home on television, tonight's meeting is a conference meeting where we're just discussing issues. Um, these issues have also been discussed previously in leadership meetings. Um, Ms. Gassion, thank you. Thank you. Please move to resolution number 10 and 11, as resolution number 9 has been withdrawn by the administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, Madam Clerk, <clears throat> Joshua Zage from our Recreation Department uh, to, to explain both of these. Item 10 is the contract for goal, uh, goalie training at our South Mountain Arena. And the second one is to um, for a contract for the North Ward Center to provide recreational activities at the Branch Brook Park. And again, Mr. Zage uh, is here to explain and also the vendor is here for item number 10. Thank you. Mr. Zage. Uh, Joshua Zaitz, Essex County Parks. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, as uh, the administrator mentioned, number 10 is actually a revenue contract where um, uh, the county will receive $1,000 per month for the um, 
uh, goalie training camp. And uh, as Mr. Uh, as uh, the administrator mentioned, the um, vendor is here if you'd like him to come up. Let's come forward. Good evening. My name is Tom Fogo, great save goaltending. Um, what we do over in West Orange in uh, Cody Arena is we train uh, hockey goalies in a sports-specific sports uh, environment. Um, we have a 22 by 45 foot uh, area in the lobby uh, that's, that's uh, cordoned off by glass. Uh, we've been there for the last five years uh, on a previous lease, working with uh, hockey youth um, since 2012. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Mr. Paul Vecchio? No questions. Free Ogres. Okay. How many youth do you say you work with? Sorry? You said how many, how many youth do you say you work uh, with? We work with about 100. With 100 youth? Mm -hmm. And that's throughout the year? or? That's throughout the year. Okay. And how many people do you have on staff? Uh, myself. Uh, that's my. That's not my full-time job. My uh, regular job. I'm a school administrator. Uh, I've been an administrator for 14 years. And this is a nonprofit. Uh, no, it's not a nonprofit. It's an LLC. Okay. All right. Well, okay. so you're working with 100 children. What types of activities? It's all goalie training for hockey-specific goalies. Uh, what Just we do is we operate uh, Monday to Thursday. Uh, it has to be up to school hours, obviously. Um, all our clients are, are school children. Uh, so we can only do usually five to eight or six to nine. Um, and then weekends with, with games and everything else moves on with, with the sport. There's really no interest uh, to have anyone here at that time. So it's four days a week usually throughout the course of the year. Summer it's a little less, obviously, because we, we uh, promote other sports, not just to play one sport. So we slow down in the summer months. Very good. Do the children have to pay a fee for enrollment? Uh, no, it's only uh, per lesson fee. Uh, so we do it as, as they come. Uh, or if they, they come off and it's obviously reduced fee. And what is that? It's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars each lesson. A lesson, yes. Okay, so the kids have to pay the fifty dollars each lesson. Mm -hmm. So then, what is the contract for, Mr. Mr. Jackson? Um, and I, I'll defer to Mr. Zaitz, but the contract basically provides that in return for having the space and providing the lessons, uh, the vendor pays the county a fee. And it, which amounts to a thousand dollars per month, and right. also some investment, some capital improvement investments as well. So it's a revenue generator for the Correct. county. Yeah. Okay. Just one more, one more sure. question, just to clarify, um, what we are, we're only allowed to have uh, usually one student at a time. It's not where it's a class uh, like a dance class where we'll have fifteen to twenty students. It's usually a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, it's a small area, um, so we don't have a large group and generating. You know, two, three, four thousand hours, one student at a time. Yeah. Um, because it's a small area. I understand. I mean, it's okay. goalie training. You can't right. train a bunch of goalies at one exactly. time. Okay. Okay. Oh, Vice President Gill. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just this is more of again of a comment uh, than a question, and I, and I think this is great and a great program and a revenue generator, but. Um, it, it just gives me another opportunity to also highlight the difference between the nonprofit and the for-profit sector of, of, of youth sports. And it's an unbelievably growing market, and our, our facilities are at a premium for uses in those markets. Um, and I continue to believe that um, when we contract with for-profit um, services like this one, that we should really uh, do our best to, uh, and with all due respect, I think this is not a comment directed towards the program, which I think is great. It's a more general comment about making sure that we're generating as much revenue from for-profit um, activities like this one, um, because you know that's it's it is. Uh, um, I'm sure our ice time is de is in demand. I'm sure it's a big deal that we have a rink. It's a big deal that we have use of soccer fields, and I I just feel strongly that we've got to do better with our for-profit vendors of extracting more revenue from them. Thank you. I do have another question. Is there any room, what is, what is it like if uh, someone from a low to moderate income family really wants to learn this and doesn't have $50 a lesson? I'm sorry, just repeat that, I'm sorry. Sure. 
what if someone from a low to moderate income family really would want to learn this but doesn't necessarily have $50? We, we, work, we work with our families to where if, if finance are an issue, hockey is a very expensive sport. It's I, very I, have, expensive. I have two children that play. Um, I live in Hudson County. Uh, however, my both children play out of West Orange. I have a, an eighth grader who's looking at Seton Hall Prep. Um, so I pretty much live in West Orange in the, uh, in the arena. Um, so we work with all different classes of families. We do have uh, players, for example, that play for the Devils Youth Program out of Cody Arena, and they're on a tuition um, assistance program. So we work with them as well through that to where we will offset the cost. Uh, at the end of the day, this is not a full-time job for me. This is not, if I have lessons tonight or don't have lessons, then it doesn't matter if we put food on my table. Mm -hmm. I do have a regular job, so I do this because I played growing up and I, I've been coaching for 20 years. We want to generate interest in, in the sport, but selfishly in a position since I played that growing up as well, we want to make sure we promote that position as much as we can so we do offset costs for students or families in need. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Zates. Sure. Joshua Zates, Essex County Parks. Number 11 is the uh, renewal of a contract with uh, the North Ward Center for recreational programs that take place over at uh, Branchburg Park. Um, just to give the board uh, just a sampling of some of the programs they run. Um, it's after school recreational programs. They do Little League baseball for 4 to 12 year olds, softball for 4 to 13 year olds. Uh, on the weekends they run sports clinics. Uh, the weekend programs take place all day on Saturday and uh, half days on Sundays. Okay. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Mr. Palavecchio? Uh, no questions on this. <clears throat> Free Alders, Free Alder Jones. I, I, I see that um, it's for the parks, and you said it's Branchwood Park. Now, is any of those same activities going going on in the other parks that we have in this county? The, uh, again, Joshua is HS County Parks. Let me know which one. Sure, this is specifically for Branchwood Park. We do have four recreational um, contracts that we deal with. Um, this one is is. Uh, ends on October 31st, so that's why it's the first one. There's three more that are gonna end on December 31st, so we'll bring that to the board probably within a month or so. And those three are for Glenfield Park, Weequake Park, and Westside Park. And okay. they have those programs. Correct, yeah. Um, the, the extent of the programs varies um, with the different parks. I know uh, not, not specifically this contract, but some of the other ones, the, um, the organizations, that run the recreational programs provide a, a summer camp and after school camp stuff such as that. Well, is it possible if I could know, Madam Chair, Absolutely. I would like to know no, with Weekway Park and some of the other parks as to the staff and how much money is being allocated to those staff for those particular activities that goes on in our county parks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We request that answer formally. Yeah, I, I could just say that um, very, it's, it's almost identical to, to this contract in that we, we, the county, pay a monthly fee to the particular organization to run those programs. And however, that organization um, pays their staff, the county wouldn't necessarily know. I still would want to know how much the organization receives for the different county activities that goes on in our parks. Absolutely. Yeah, certainly. I'll get that answer. Okay. What kind of activities is this with the North Ward? Uh, it's very baseball and softball uh, uh, heavy. Um, little league, four to twelve year olds. Softball, four to thirteen year olds. Okay. So, so we pay the nonprofit to have a like little league. Help me understand. It's it's a combination uh, little league and other recreational services, after school uh, programs. They do uh, sports clinics. Things such as that. Okay. Uh, free olders, free old Jones. As I said, I just want to know, in writing, in the different parks with that same type of activity that is going on, how much each of those facilities are receiving in terms of funds. I think it's a very good question, and um, we'll get that in writing, especially before the vote next week. Who, who staffs the programs? The uh, North Ward Center or the nonprofit affiliated with the specific park would staff everything. And this amount of money is for equipment or for salaries? It's um, 
it's the fee the county pays to the nonprofit in order to provide those services to the public. Okay. And once we pay it to the nonprofit, we don't monitor it or put they in in order for I mean, what if they were paying somebody like five hundred dollars an hour with it? Uh, is what we, I'm getting at. What here. we require we from my from my understanding, on three, Madam Chair, what we require from the vendor is uh, essentially an invoice where they would go over what activities they ran, um, the attendance, the uh, breakdown of uh, age groups, things such as that. We would review it, and then based on that, we would then pay the vendor on a, on a monthly basis. Okay. Mr. McInerney, is that something we've ever reviewed in the past, or no? Uh, I have, but... <coughs> Okay. So since we're on the subject, so that ninety-two thousand dollars covers what period of time? It would cover um, from, I believe it's uh, March first through October thirty-first of uh, next of eighteen and nineteen. So it comes out to five thousand seven 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 per month and change. It covers a year. What was that? Say that? It covers March through October of 2018 and 2019. It's two years. Mm -hmm. March 1st through October 31st. Okay. Three elders? Mr. McInerney? Mr. Paul Vecchio? All right. Thank you. Please list it. Thank you. And um, contingent upon the questions that were raised, uh, we'll be listed for vote at our next meeting. Contingent upon receiving those, the answers to those questions. Uh, Mr. Jackson, let's move to resolution number 12. Uh, yes, Madam Clerk, uh, we're gearing up for uh, the winter and we are uh, entering in a contract with uh, Penn Jersey Machinery to provide three uh, front end loaders uh, for, in that, uh, for that purpose, uh, an amount not to exceed $90,000. It's $3,500 per front end loader per month, and it's a one year contract and a four month minimum. And uh, this is being paid for through uh, operating funds. Okay. Mr. McInerney? Mr. Paul Avecchio? Yes, and this is operated by uh, our own employees? Correct. Public Works employees? Free orders? Okay. Hearing none, please list it. And let's move to resolution 13, Mr. Jackson. Uh, item 13, uh, Madam President, is uh, to provide for network computer support and uh, maintenance for our public works department. And uh, Assistant Accounting Administrator, uh, Mr. Hunt, is here to explain. Uh, good evening, Carl Hunt, Assistant County Administrator. This is for the maintenance of the computers that the public works currently use, and it's uh, an agreement that was put in place last year and uh, extension of that agreement. Okay, Mr. McInerney? I have any Mr. Paul Vecchio? No question. <clears throat> uh, freeholders? Okay, so this is the same vendor that we had from last year, Mr. Hunt? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Please move to resolution 14, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Madam President, item 14, uh, every year we receive uh, the Department of Transportation New Jersey uh, goes through an allocation process uh, and allocates each to each county a certain sum uh, for uh, each year. And next year we're, we're going to receive $9,724,071. Uh, this, uh, this is a resolution to accept that money. Um, and then our uh, Department of Public Works will go through and uh, come up with a program to allocate these dollars to uh, a specific road program. Okay, thank you. Mr. McInerney. These funds, we, we get these funds up front now. They're, it's not on a reimbursement basis anymore, correct? That's correct. We, we just get them up front and then... That is correct. And then we go through a, an audit process that determines whether or not they were spent correct. in accordance with the grant. That's correct. All right. Mr. Paul Vecchio? No question. Free elders? This transportation grant, um, Mr. Jackson, can you flush it out a little bit more for the record? What is the, what is the transportation of? 
Well, it's every, every year, Madam President, the department gives, again, money to each county for, to improve its roads mm -hmm. uh, and its infrastructure. And um, once we know the amount of money, um, uh, Mr. Uh, San Sanjeev and his team, uh, Mr. Varghese and his team go through and design a program to improve um, certain county roads. And now that we know the amount of money, we'll be, if we accept it, we'll be coming back at a later point for contracts, for a contract to improve uh, a, a portion of our county roads. Thank you. Mr. McInerney? It's pretty much an assertion of grant, really. Sure. Mm -hmm. Is what it is. And I'm sure they already have a list of roads that need repairing. It's a question. Just a question of which roads based on the right. amount of money that they now have. And, 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 mm -hmm. and just to be uh, clear, this is actually for 18, so we would just assist an accepting resolution, then we'll do the actual insertion Jim. next year. Okay. Yeah. This is the acceptance of the money. Yes, sir. Okay. Not the insertion. Okay. Ms. Paul Accio? No questions. <clears throat> Freeholders? Scotland Road. We need Scotland Road fix. Okay. Lots of possibility. It's sick on the potholes <laughs> there. All right? And I'm, I'm going to have a whole nother list of roads for you, too, to be considered. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, please move to resolution 15. Uh, yes, I'm out of uh, president. This is a, um, again, another 2017 uh, budget insertion to. Uh, replace uh, the, Dutch, the, the Dutch Lane Bridge over the Deep Avald Brook. And um, this uh, million dollars will go towards uh, doing that. And again, it's the New Jersey Department of, of Transportation. Um, and we were notified by the commissioner's office that we received this grant to, uh, to uh, replace the bridge. Okay. Mr. McInerney? No Mr. Paul Vecchio? Yes. Um, this is the insertion of the funds. Uh, is this something that will, is this a uh, job that will be bid? Or has it already been bid? No, no, we have not. But that's something. Right. To, okay, it'll be spec'd out. Okay, thank you. Okay, pre holders. Hearing none, please list it. Please move to resolutions number 16. Uh, item 16, Madam President, is a, as a acceptance of a letter of intent to accept the grant for the 2018 year uh, for comprehensive alcoholism and drug abuse services grant in the amount of $1,347,180. And this will be a budget insert in the January 2018 budget. Okay. Mr. McInerney. And then we have, we have not the that is correct. Mr. Paul, back here. No questions. Free elders. Okay. Hearing none, please. please. Free old Luciano. Thank you, Madam President. Have those uh, not for profit organizations had a chance yet to, I guess, bid on this? No. What, what will happen is what? once we've identified the, the funds, then we'll go out as we typically do and ask for a a request and, and proposals to get funding. Uh, only reason I say so is because I can't find it here on my computer. Right. I pulled up 16 and it's it's not the right resolution. So I was just trying to clarify that for the record. Um, this is state funding. Uh, this is actually the, uh, HUD funding. This you, is you, federal. Yes. Okay. 16. Thank you. Mr. McInerney. No, I'm, I'm sorry, correct oh, myself. It's actually, it's actually state funding. I was, I was looking at 17. Um, this is actually state funding. I'm sorry. Mr. McInerney, yeah, so we can we clarify. We those contracts until the money's inserted and then the RFPs go out. Okay. Request, and then you'll see, you know, usually how you see the decision memorandum or the, the documentation, you'll see a listing of those that have won mm -hmm. the grants. You're not going to see here because this is just. Yeah, the, the acceptance. This is the acceptance, okay. Subsequently, you see where this money goes. Mm -hmm. and to the well, then, you know what, Madam President, through you, let me further my question then. Because I, I, it says services, but do we know what types of services these are? And the only reason I bring it up is because I know it's a very um, 
sensitive but serious epidemic right now, especially mm -hmm. drug use and abuse, opiate problems that we have in our, in our county. I have had countless phone calls and emails of folks looking to put their kids, young folks, you know, in their teens and 20s into facilities. And I wasn't sure if this is the type of money that we're talking about to, prom you know, to promote you know, someone coming in for the RFP to have that type of facility. This is specifically to provide for services for uh, individuals and to monitor programs for citizens with alcohol and drug related uh, abuse. It's, it's treatment, prevention, education, all of those services are provided by the entities that would ultimately get the dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Three others? I just want to make a point of clarity. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that this money is going to be um, accepted and that uh, organizations are going to have an opportunity to uh, submit proposals and then do what nonprofits do, which is be an extension of government and reach out. But I do want to say that I um, often wish that this type of attention was paid to this epidemic many, many years ago because it's not a new thing. It's something that has been around for quite some time and in particularly in urban communities as well. Unfortunately, until it's spilled over into suburbia, um, uh, that's whenever we're seeing you know, help like this. But it took it to spill over into suburbia because prior to, oftentimes, it was criminalized. Um, so I just wanted to put that on the record. So I'm glad to see that society has moved in the direction of seeing that there's an issue and providing grant funds to help solve it. But I do want to also then put on the record, too, just to remember um, that there are some who are still sitting behind bars because they are criminalized because they got addicted to those opiates, which led to gateways, which led to um, the criminal justice system. Bill Richardson. Through you, uh, Madam President, you took the words right out of my mouth. It's been an epidemic in this country in certain areas for 40, 50 years. Yeah. And you're right, it has taken spillage into certain other areas for it to be recognized uh, as now all of a sudden it's an epidemic. And I don't wish to minimize anything, but I, I'm with you. I wish attention would have been paid 30, 40 years ago when it was just in certain areas instead of criminalizing. But at least ho hopefully now something will be done to help everyone who has an issue. That's right. Free all, free all the and I, and I, I concur, uh, Madam President, is although you talk about the opium, but we still in urban areas have people who are on heroin and crack. Mm -hmm. So will these people be able to be serviced in terms of that addiction instead of the money going to your suburbia areas and none coming into your urban areas? I saw the crack Mm -hmm. took place in 72 in the Newark school system where families was destroyed behind that drug and nobody helped the community. They criminalized it. So now it's big business because it has spread all over and especially to middle and upper class people. But we are all a part of the human race. So hopefully when we get this money, Please don't forget to think in terms of putting something in the urban area to help these people who cannot afford the good health insurance to go to those facilities, but to be placed in the city of Newark or your urban area so it, they can be attained and to be able to get there. Absolutely. So what you're doing for the epidemic that is taking place all over the United States, I just pray that our urban areas and whoever is going to look at those grants and allot this money, don't forget about these urban areas because we need these and we see our children suffering and the community suffering. And that's all I have to say, but I will be back. <laughs> I know you will be, free of the Jones, but it's a very, your point well taken. So, Mr. Jackson. If I may, Madam President, I just, just wanted to, to clarify that um, while I, I'm not disputing any of the, the uh, points that the uh, freeholders made and, and you made, Madam President, uh, just to, this is a grant that we've received, I think, at least for 10 years. Right. Um, and funding level's been about the same. So um, 
we're hoping that the same, you know, some of the same institutions would we'll obviously we look at it, but we've been getting this for quite some time. I don't want it to seem like, you know, this is a million three that we're getting this year. This is, this is an ongoing grant. I, I don't know whether that was clear. No, we absolutely understood. Okay. Um, Freeholder Jones, your, your comment, I would, I would like to, with your permission, turn it into a question. Um, when uh, the RFPs go out um, and they come in, uh, and I, again, I do remember seeing them from last year and, and previous years and nonprofits, um, but we would like to see, if possible, um, a list of services that they provide for, is it drugs? And you just sort of paint it with one title that's just drugs. So is that okay for, you know, are they doing detoxing for um, heroin addicts, for crack addicts, for opioid addictions, um, you know, um, just sort of more detail in it if we could. And we can certainly give you last year's uh, awardees and the programs that, and description of the programs that they provided right. last year. And I would anticipate, as these typically do, that many of the same entities would be involved this year. So we can get that would give be you perfect. That. That'd mm -hmm. be perfect. And the RFP that was written for last year that actually went out, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Can I feel the Jones? <coughs> All right. Um, any other questions? Okay. Please list it. Let's move to resolution number 17 and read. Uh, uh, item 17, Madam President, is uh, from the Department okay, of uh, Housing and Urban Development for a continuing care program. This grant helps us to coordinate uh, activities and monitor um, activities, planning activities, and the implementation of a housing and services system uh, to particular <coughs> care for the homeless. It's a continuum of care planning activities. And this is uh, uh, help us with uh, staff support, and this is the same funding as we received last year. Okay. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Mr. Paul Vecchio? No questions. Freeholders? Okay, hearing none. Okay. All right. Freeholders, do you have any uh, questions or comments regarding resolutions 18 uh, through 42 and then 44 through 51? Freeholder Siebold. Thank you. I would like to be included on resolution 42 and the Mental Health Association of Essex County is having breakfast this weekend and I'd like to be included on that commendation. Okay. Free Elder? Free Elder Johnson. Free Elder Johnson? Yeah, 18 through, through 27. Okay. Free Elders? All right. Hearing none, uh, please list those resolutions for action at our uh, next meeting. We are now going to move to resolution number 43, which is going to be the only item voted on uh, during tonight's meeting. Mr. Jackson, can you please explain? Yes, uh, Madam President, and again, thank you for uh, being willing to uh, vote on this item tonight. This is from the Office of the Sheriff. It's a contract for to Computer Square uh, to provide an interface module for the Sheriff's Office and Mr. Hunt is again here to explain. Okay. Uh, Carl Hunt, Assistant County Administrator. Uh, this came last week and it was um, rejected because it apparently appeared to be an invoice uh, versus a code. Mm -hmm. This is for the electronic interface for the sheriff, between the sheriff and the police. And it's used to, um, for bail reform, so it cuts down on duplication <laughs> and also helps the police in, in speeding up their process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. McInerney, last week there was a lot of discussion about this. Well, what happened last week when I looked through the documentation, I saw two invoices that in the totality equaled the 73000 One was a May 17th and one was a June uh, 2017. And that led me to believe that we already had contracted for the services. And uh, uh, so I questioned why it was already on the agenda. It was not invoices, but it was a 
You want to be added to 48? What the administration has done is they um, have now have the quote on a quote form. And so uh, what I have perceived was not true. Okay. Are we all good, Mr. McInerney now? Yes, we're fine with it now. Ms. Paul back here? Frank's good, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have a quote that says that. <laughs> Free olders? Stay still. Okay. Hearing that, is there a mover and a second? Moved by Freeholder Siebold. Is there a second? No, second? Second by Freeholder Johnson. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Bobadilla absent. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Yes. Freeholder Siebold. Yes. Freeholder Toro. Absent. Freeholder Timberlake. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to move to report of board committees. Are there any report of board committees? Any legislative reports? Any written communication? Any unfinished business? Any new business to discuss? Okay, now we're gonna move to public comment session. Is there any member of the public wishing to comment on any issue? Please come forward, state your name and affiliation. Closing public comment session. Free opening, you getting up, Mr. Cowboy? <coughs> <coughs> I'm all right, Cowboy, for the district leader, South Ward, Newark. I would like to uh, uh, ask if uh, that was anything being done, or I haven't heard any from anybody to find out if I, the meeting's coming up. Yes, Mr. Cowboy. They have, they have, they certainly contacted me about a date, and I know that they've been reaching out to department heads to organize a meeting for you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, also, I would like to uh, uh, ask if uh, some of the things that on the, on the trees around there being checked out as, uh, as winter is coming, which I said they're, they're very delicate around the park. I haven't seen any work done through the summer uh, too much on the trees, and uh, I was wondering if uh, they're going to be looking at that or yes mr cowboy we are because you brought it to our attention so we were going to be looking into it for sure okay thank you very much thank you mr cowboy are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all okay hearing none closing public comment session opening up freeholder comment session freeholder jones um I visited Wheatway Park, the Indian Trail, mm -hmm. because people had concern about dead trees. And many of them are on that area now, but this particular one is a whole tree. And it, I don't know whether it will fall over on the trains or whatever, but it's the, I don't know whether it's what railroad track or whatever it is. But the tree is that it's a huge tree. And I know that we pay a lot of money the for the maintenance of those trees. And I know there are young people who are running from some academy, I don't know what, but it's seemingly suburban or whatever. God forbid if one of those dead trees fall on one of those kids, because I'm out in the park between 6 and 7 o'clock in the morning. So I would appreciate with the supervisors or whatever, and you see me out there, Brother Richardson. Every morning. Every morning. So mm -hmm. I would appreciate if you have Getting somebody who can be objective, that understands safety, to come back and give you a report, Mr. Jackson, that what is needed. We pay a lot of money. I think last time this person was there, we paid over a million dollars for him to take care of the parks. And the only thing, I guess other parks, nobody's complaining, but I do know that there's a lot of trees in Wheatway Park needs to be cut up, throw away, or do whatever you have to Give it to people who burn wood in the wintertime or whatever. But there's a lot of trees in there, and it's a safety issue that uh, Mr. Cowboy is talking about, and I hope that you would take care of that for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, we'll throw an orange park in that request, too. Levy, we're on a roll tonight. Huh? I said we're on a roll tonight. Absolutely, baby. This so is a new day. Throw an orange park on that request. All right. Um, three holders? Okay. Hearing none, motion to adjourn. Okay. <coughs> Yay.